Hey space fans, today's tutorial is out of this world. That's right, I'm going to show you how to make the center star for the Space Odyssey quilt by Natalie Crabtree using the awesome fabric Hula Universe by The Little Red House. Let's get started. That's right, space fans, we are going to have a blast off today. I am Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics. Welcome to another adventure here at Making It Fun, where I prefer to try to teach something about sewing, crafting, quilting, and share my love of Michael Miller Fabrics with all of you once a week, sometimes on Wednesdays, well, usually on Wednesdays. I would also today like to welcome to the set uh, extra special guest. Uh, you know Mike is normally helping me out uh, with introductions and showing off our product. But today we have the American Buzz Lightyear. Thank you, everybody. Although I can tell Mike's not too impressed. But we wanted to bring American Buzz Lightyear because we are all about outer space because this fantastic new line, Hula Universe, is fabulous and it is really taking off uh, to all of those great quilt shops around all your local quilt shops and they're doing fantastic with it. So this is from uh, the Little Red House and these fabrics are just adorable animals and creatures in outer space having a blast. Oh, before I even show you in the board, let me point out over here on the main panel. This is super cool and we even have a bit of metallic in here right here and right here uh, on the main uh, rocket panel there. And then you can then see again, uh, we have some fantastic coordinates in here. Uh, you can see we've got a fantastic little star print that I just absolutely love. And then the different animals. It's a, look at that. The cat's eyes. I mean, can you get it? So anyways, I just absolutely love this. This is Hula Universe uh, shipping or has shipped to the local quilt shops in your area, your favorite online retailers as well. And today we're going to do a free pattern that was done. It is really cool called Space Odyssey. Um, it's right here for you. It is from Natalie Crabtree. Natalie Crabtree is one of our fantastic pattern partners who creates a lot of the free patterns that you can get over on the michaelmiller.com website over in the inspiration free downloads tab. Boop, boop, boop. You will print out and follow. Look at this. These full color diagrams, instructions, and all of the information you need to know. But as we're diving into the fabrics, I'm going to use a couple of different fabrics because I like my basics. This is an example of one quarter of the star before we build it all the way into the block that we're going to make. I'm going to call this the diamond star. This is the center of the quilt project and I'm going to walk you through the construction of the center of the quilt project today. Now, when you go to print out your free downloads, if you've never done this before, I need to point out something today that's incredibly important because we have provided some free templates as well for you. So you'll have your pattern with your instructions and your template pages are going to print out and look something just like this. And the first thing I want you to do is I want you to take a ruler and I want you to lay a ruler where you can really easily see it and place what would be a one inch square over this that says one inch there because this is how you're going to calibrate your scale of your templates because this is a piecing not an applique project so we need to make sure that we're all calibrated to the same. There's a couple different tricks you can do. Now on my printer I first printed it at 100% and it did this to me. Um, so you can probably see down on the corners I would then just simply take like my ruler and a sharpie marker and I would just extend those lines to create the template. Some of you are a little bit more slick with your computers and printers or have slicker printers and you can actually do, and I found this to be very successful, this was a borderless eight and a half by 11 printing. So you can see I have complete templates. If I come down here and I measure this, it literally is spot on at the one inch calibration mark. Now in doing that, you're gonna be dialed in to follow all the cutting instructions within the pattern as provided. Now I ran into a little hiccup and I don't think it's an error in the pattern and I actually don't think it's an error in my work, but I think it's a great something I can teach all of you that are learning to quilt with me that you can do something to test. So I want you to get in the habit of always testing people's instructions or people's concepts if you haven't done a, a demo block to begin with. This is what I really mean. So if we take this unit here, the next step is going to ask us to cut strips of fabric to cut out our template pieces. What I need you to think about is this is going to be the two edges of our cut like this. So what I really want you to do is I want you to measure from one edge over and 
not the bold line, but the lighter line, because that is the quarter inch seam allowance. And just make sure that you cut your strips of fabric, whatever this exact width is, so that you can lay your template pieces once they're cut out onto the strips. So this is a leftover piece I can show you here. And you can actually see I've been cutting the other template pieces from it. So as I do this, and as we move our templates, it's the same thing. I'm just gonna slide this and I'm gonna lay it right down in here just like this, and so I'm matching up all three of my edges so that I can then take my ruler, and even when I use, and this is printed paper, so even cardstock wouldn't be safe enough to keep your hands and project and um, fabric safe. So I want you to still lay a standard cutting ruler on top of your template, and then go ahead and cut through so that you can see what you're doing is correct. So what I was pointing out a moment ago is the width of my strips were cut at the width of my template regardless of what the patterns say. And that way in case you don't have the opportunity to print at full scale or um, borderless or whatever, you could technically print out the sizes as needed. This is going to control everything, but then your math will be a little bit smaller and I'm probably just confusing. So let's just move on. Oh, um, now I also forgot real quick though, I was being so um, dedicated to protecting our hands and our work. When I do get down into these little tips that we have right here, at this point, I am going to be a little bit just kind of delicate and just kind of, you know, let my rotary color cutter come over the tip that way because these don't have to be perfect. So what we're gonna do to create this awesome star center is we are gonna need four of the template A pieces, large like that, okay? And then as you can see in the star, we're also gonna combine a couple of our other fun fabrics. And oh, let me tell you what I'm using today. Like I said, we were using in the pattern that Natalie did all of the hula universe because that was the quilt. Now I like to make things a little bit different and the truth is I forgot to order the stuff in time. So I have the awesome panel and I had um, some of the other parts, but I just decided to mix it up and make it. So we're using our hash dot mustard. I've got some cotton couture here. I've got my marble and I also have a brand new fabric we call cocoa which is just this awesome texture and it reads um, as kind of a woven piece. You can see it right here. I just love it. So anyways I'm using cocoa as much as I possibly can uh, and it's just terrific. So I'm going to set this here as we dive back in and I'm going to walk you now through the parts and pieces of making our template B pieces. Now our template B pieces are cut in strips. We're going to need eight of them for each of the, the pieces that we're doing. We're going to eat eight total. Excuse me, not each, eight total. With that being said, there I4, I'm laying these folded in half as I'm working so I can get more at once. And when I'm cutting with templates, I really want all of my template pieces to be exactly the same so that they're all gonna marry together and sew together so very nicely. So now let me just put this back together. And then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it because I am very right-handed and I want it to be safe for my work. So I need to do it this way. Now I'm gonna go ahead and again, because I've already been cutting from these, I'm gonna lay this fabric uh, excuse me, this template paper right on top. And again, I'm going to use my ruler. And you kind of see I'm kind of laying it down just gently there so I'm not moving anything. And now I'm going to slide through here. And like before, I'm cutting multiples of these. So this edge becomes my next cut edge. But at the moment, I just need to go ahead and take care of these little edges here so I can start sewing, showing us how to sew this together. So I'm going to follow the line here and here to trim those off like that. And we'll do the same back here. Do watch out for your thumb. Okay, so now these pieces are cut. And as a quick reminder, while I was doing that, they were folded in half. So I ended up yielding two of the smaller diamonds of each of the fabrics. And then we're gonna put these together with our mustard color in the points and our blue or turquoise colors on the sides. So I just positioned them the way you're gonna to need to position them for our block pieces, our quarter blocks. And then I'm just gonna separate like yay. And then as I go ahead and do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just fold these right sides together. And as these fold over right sides together, oh, it looks like I forgot to trim off that little tip, how, how silly. This is just gonna line up so that these edges just match perfect here. And I'm gonna just sew starting up at this little front tip up here. So we just wanna make sure that's just a little bit more accurate. There we go. Using a quarter inch seam allowance from off of the edge all the way through to that corner. 
If you'd like to chain piece these, you can, but remember uh, which orientation is which. So I'm gonna lay now over this side, and what that really did, yes, it means I'm looking at a different piece of fabric. Flip-flopping that way. And right through again. Then as we get ready to iron these, I'm just gonna always iron to the same color. So let's go ahead and just iron from the gold up into the blue. So I'm just gonna hold the blue up in the air and let it press over like that. And uh, same thing on the secondary piece. And again, we're building four sets of everything I'm showing you right now to build out the middle of this. Okay, then as I bring them back over to the table, you wanna make sure you get them so the orientation's right. Remember the gold was up in the center and at the bottom, so tip and tip there. So I'm just gonna match up my points, lay them together, and you're gonna actually have that same benefit of all of those pieces lining up as they go through there as well. Head on over to the quarter inch seam allowance one last time for this part. And I always like to double check while I'm up in the air, just kinda of make sure everything just the way I want it. Now after I get those two pieces put together, I'm gonna to come on over here and press it over. You're just gonna to press towards one side. And now what I'm gonna do is either follow the diagram or follow the other units I've made because all of them are gonna be exactly the same. So let's go ahead and just finish off the part we've been working with. Here again is the example. So if I lay this in here like this, then I need to remember that I had two other squares that you haven't been told about yet, but I knew about it because I prepped for the video before. So you're gonna have two square sizes that are gonna be the fill-in spots here, and you're gonna have a five inch square and a six and three quarter inch square. As long as your one inch marker lines up on your pattern, even if your sizes are slightly off on your strips from what the instructions called, I have found that everything still works out nicely and I'm not getting any puckering or stretching or anything. So six and three quarters and the five inch squares are gonna work with your pieces as long as that one inch marker for your consistency is accurate. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut through on the diagonal tip to tip all of those squares, the six and three quarter squares and the five inch squares because we're gonna use them now to fill in the rest of our pieces. So as I hold this looking just like it is in the original, we're gonna take first a five inch square and we always put on the small square and then the large square because of the overlap that'll happen here in the corner. This is gonna come in here and fit in here just like this like you see. Okay, so if you've never sewn triangles together before that don't have the corners tipped off, what you're looking at here is kind of a split the difference. So I need my triangle to have a little extra overlap in both sides. Now the other trick is as, as I go ahead and I start to flip this over, as you can tell, right sides together, what I also always am looking for as my seam lines up here is I want the top edge to be lining up nice as well. So that's running the straight line that the block was already doing. So if you don't know where to start, use the other edge of your fabric as a calibration point because it will really help that way. And then come on over and do yourself a quarter inch seam allowance as well. Now, one of the reasons I love showing all of these awesome patterns that our pattern partners do is one, is I get new ideas all the time. And two is a lot of times with the free patterns that are over on our free downloads with Michael Miller is there's a lot of great patchwork units involved. And that's what I wanted to do today is show you this really cool diamond star that you can make using all kinds of different fabrics and all kinds of different quilts. And of course, in this pattern, there are three other units that are awesome as well. And maybe I'll teach you those sometime soon in the near future. Let's get this pressed out first. You can see how it's come on. Now I'm gonna press into the gray for the reason that it doesn't have the patchwork in it. So it's gonna press over more nice and more smooth. I did them all the same way and it really didn't affect the next phase. But you can see how nicely that lined up here and here because of using that outside edge along this outside edge. Mm, I like that trick a lot. Now, you can see that your 
smaller five inch half square is down here. Now the other one here kind of plays a little bit of a trick. Where is it gonna go? How's it gonna fit? So it's gonna be one of the straight edges from the square and it really extends the line of this first diamond unit we made. So same thing is I want this to finish across here just like it is. So now that I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go right sides together. I'm gonna to flop it over this way and it's actually a straight line. So I lined up this edge, obviously the sewing edge, and now we're just gonna go right back to the sewing machine. But sometimes due to the nature of our fabric and stuff, I'm gonna to have to flip my block over. Then it's just a quarter inch seam allowance, making sure everything stays lined up. right through the edge there. And then uh, same thing, I'm gonna press over into the gray fabric. And I'll take a moment to brag and show you how nice that is all looking. This outside edge is lining up nice. This inside edge is lining up nice. And now we're gonna do the same thing from our black unit that we cut this from that first template early on. And so we're gonna do the same thing. But now, as these go together here, the small edge is gonna go up here from the triangle, the small triangle, uh, small square, the triangle left from the small square is gonna go up here. Then the big one, so basically the big ones match up and the small ones go on opposite sides. Same style construction though. I'm gonna bring this here. I'm gonna match it up. Now I have two edges, I don't know where I'm going. So as I flop it over, I'm lining it up, I'm lining it up, and I'm really lining up this outside edge here. And what that usually does is it pushes that other corner over just enough to allow for that quarter inch that we need. Another quick trick I'll point out as I'm ironing this into the grate, like I did before, is the instructions call for either stabilizing or heavily starching your fabrics um, because you're sewing so much on the bias. Now for me, I've never been a giant fan of the spray starches or anything that I'm gonna be doing around in my studio that might create additional mess or whatnot. I press my fabric first, but my trick is I take my fantastic Juki sewing machine or whatever sewing machine you have. You need a Juki, no, I'm good. So at any rate, I take my awesome sewing machine I just set the stitch length to 2.0 millimeter instead of 2.5 millimeter and I go a nice pace and if you notice I'm never pushing or pulling on my fabric. I'm letting the feed dogs of the machine do all the work. So keeping your feed dogs clean and a 2 mil stitch length really helps the feed and then I don't have to do so much starching and pressing and I learned that trick several years ago playing with triangles. Okay, let's put this last piece in together and again it's going to start with... <laughs> The squared edge, leaving the hypotenuse, everyone's favorite word, left over here. We're gonna sew this on, right sides together, match up your top, match up your sewing line, and you are good to go. Press this one as well. And then the last phase per quadrant is just to sew these two together. So flipping them right sides together, matching up whichever edge you like to start with. It really doesn't matter. I'm using that center seam to line up. The edges all line up. So far this construction in the prep work and everything was super, super easy. As I come over that center seam, I'm just double checking kind of at this back end here, make sure everything's still in alignment. And again, really don't wanna be pushing or pulling on anything. Just letting those feed dogs do the work, letting it all come through nice like this. Now for here, I'm gonna press from my patchwork into the less patchwork portion or up into my black, my um, template A piece. Again, the patchwork pieces don't like to press over as much. And now you should have one, two, three, 
and four of these awesome blocks. And we're just gonna go ahead and join block to block, and then we'll make the center seam super easy. So let me get a little head start. I'm just gonna line up this corner and the back corner here as I approach the machine. We're just gonna take a second between blocks to press out. And again, we're gonna press into the black fabric or the non-patchwork here. And we'll do it on the same series of blocks because like you noticed at the beginning when we started to sew together those edges, we had been nesting just naturally by always pressing to the same color fabric over and over again, because then the block uses opposite color fabrics, which is really cool so that all of your patchwork nests or lays the seams in opposite directions so that it's much easier to get a nice crisp seam allowance. Double check that everything is still a checkerboard. And now we're gonna match up the center and the corners and everything as we go. And we have one final stitch to do together here. So let's rock and roll through this nice long seam. And there it is, all stitched out. Let me press it so you can see it a little bit better. Of course, I'm not pressing it very nice. What's going on over here? <laughs> I get so excited when I see the last phase, you know? I know you're over there saying, we wanna see it, we wanna see it. Okay, so here it is, looking awesome, right? Is that incredible or what? Super fun, super easy. So again, help yourselves to the free downloads. They're there, they're awesome, they're available for all of you on the Michael Miller Fabric page. It's under the free downloads or the inspiration tab first. And because we had our special guest, the Americana Buzz Lightyear here today, I would like to know from all of you in the comments below, just for the fun of it, who is your favorite character from outer space? And it is definitely fair to choose one of the new awesome characters from The Little Red House and Hula Universe. Check out this awesome fabric collection. Support a local quilt shop or online retailer somewhere. They appreciate your business out there. I appreciate you being here. We will see you very, very soon again at Making It Fun. What, are you actually still here? That's fantastic. Make sure you check out some more of my other fabulous content right here on YouTube. I think it's terrific. Please subscribe while you're there and make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss another moment of the fun.